The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Aloha, body. Good morning. Buddy, what's going Good on, Good morning, man? my friend. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing. Buenos <laughs> okay. Ooh. How's it going? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good. Just relaxing, lovely Saturday morning. Yes, I can hear it in the background. What's, what's the weather like down there? It's it's always beautiful weather here. It's been seventy degrees for like the last two months. Wow. <laughs> I don't Not know jealous what at we're all. Doing in New York, I mean, I've been saying that forever. I know. Well, that's the other thing. We we're talking to uh, I think it's, what's the guy's name? Jellyfish. Jellyfish. Yeah. Jellyfish. Jellyfish. And he is a basically a, uh, a real estate developer, and he's developing properties in Mexico, and he's selling them for Monero. Oh wow! So yeah, well, we'll have him on, and we're trying to get him to come to the conference. He probably most likely will. He'll be part of Adoption Alley. Adoption Alley, which <laughs> Tug just figured out last night. <laughs> Man, that's but, awesome. I mean, that was like kind of a dream come down here. Yeah, that was a dream come true for me. Yeah, d- yeah. You don't own a place down there. You're just you're uh, you're renting. Yeah, I'm renting an apartment for now. But uh, I mean, geez, use Monero. I mean, yeah, That's if I could pay in, pay in Monero, that would be amazing. Yeah, right? very enticing. And he, it's sat. We we had a nice conversation with them. I mean, obviously, I don't, I, I can't really vouch for the guy, but he seemed like very genuine and uh, and like he he knew what he was talking about and he was explaining the pro. They basically make it very simple for you as well, right? He was basically saying it's effectively simpler or easier with with crypto to do the the closeout do the transaction he's basically saying you, you need to create a corporation as a you know foreign national is the easiest way and then you purchase the land under that and then it's much easier to just you know uh finalize the deal with a, a crypto transaction uh and, and, and note that in contract versus using the bank so it's, it's pretty interesting yeah that sounds cool looking forward to it but uh, yeah, take it away. take it away, my friend. <laughs> All right. Well, um, the big news for the past week was the Federal Reserve meeting on Wednesday. They raised 25 basis points, which is exactly what everyone expected. And with these meetings, it's we usually know what they're going to raise. So the more important thing is what they talk about. So Jay Powell didn't stand in the way. He, um, he removed all of the severe language about COVID and the geopolitical this and that. And so once he started asking questions, I was kind of sitting there. So I told you guys last week I took some profit. Um, a big part of that was just to limit my risk uh, going into this meeting. And within about a minute or two of him starting to answer questions, I just smashed the market by button on everything. I just like, nope, it's this is good. He's he's not going to stand in the way of the markets and we should go up from here. So I tweeted about that a little bit. Oh, you know, I always forget this part. If you're on Twitter spaces, I definitely recommend getting on YouTube. Uh, set your resolution to 720p so that you can follow along with the charts. So um, yeah, they weren't they weren't dovish in this meeting, but the important thing is he wasn't hawkish and they didn't increase their long-term target rate. There had been some rumors, some Fed presidents had talked about that a couple weeks ago. Maybe they need to go higher than they thought, but they didn't talk about that at all. So the markets loved it. He he just didn't get in the way. And so we'll talk about stock markets later, but they took off. Um, Crypto is still just a little bit behind in that regard, um, but not too bad. Uh, Monero, we'll start with Monero. So we're looking here at the uh, daily chart. This is basically the entire bull market, uh, sorry, bear market. Um, we've broken the main resistance, and then we're still sitting here at like the final, the, the final boss resistance. I do expect that this will break soon enough. And in a lot of ways, I feel like we could have maybe already broken it. Um, you can see that we have kind of this nice trend line down here at the bottom that we've just been going up steadily. That should hold. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, maybe we need to spend a little bit more time, but this bear market resistance line is eventually going to break. So that'll be nice. Uh, that'll send us off to the races. And yet yeah, probably a lot of people have noticed that the ratio is, is not back as high as we would prefer it maybe. But we're at 007 numbers, and 
just so that people have a, a good perspective, it's been over three years and we've been stable with Bitcoin. That's 1,300 bars, right? So really going on four years almost. So overall, like you, you wouldn't be able to paint the picture and say that Monero is losing to anything else, regardless of Tether or what the market makers or people that might pump the market, et cetera. Regardless of what they're doing, we're holding our own. And that's remarkable. It's remarkable because Monero doesn't get the kind of support that a lot of other coins do. So the fact that we hold our own for three going on four years, that's a really big deal to me. So um, we're basically just hanging out at, uh, at these 007 numbers. Let's see if I can Let's turn off some of the lifetime. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is our local structure for the past year, really. And we've kind of broken down from that. And as we've talked about before, rising wedges tend to break towards the downside. We were hoping that we might be able to break towards the upside, but recognizing that we were probably near the bottom, that we were going to have a turnaround and a, and a broad pump of crypto and stocks. Um, we talked about how we would probably need to go sideways for a period of time this year. So this is nothing unexpected. Everything's totally fine here. We can probably just keep doing this and eventually later this year, we'll have the opportunity to try and break out again. I have the divergences for anyone that's interested in divergences. So you can see that as of late, we've kind of been on the negative side of this. Uh, Binance, Qcoin, and all these others, they've been pushing their prices lower than Kraken. So this was something I was a little bit concerned about. We talked about this a week or two ago that they had spent so much time in positive divergences, I was wondering if that might reverse, if they might try and sell some of that back on the market. And I think that's basically what happened. I'm pretty sure they're getting close to being out. So right now we're looking at a four hour look back period, right? So this is sort of a rolling four hour price divergences of Monero uh, on these different exchanges relative to Kraken. This is the 10 day look back uh, time frame. So it gives us a much broader picture of what's happening. And it's really easy to see here that since uh, since right around the New Year's, Binance, in particular Binance, right, they're the largest exchange, so they're most important. You can see that uh, they've basically been in positive price divergences the entire time. And this last little bit right here where they're getting back to the zero point, in reality, on the short time frames, that's them diverging prices to the downside. So it looks to me like they're almost out of their ability to try and sell any excess Monero onto the market. And so because of that, I do think we're pretty close to a local low on the ratio. And I do think that Monero should start going up with the rest of the crypto market now. Um, we've talked about this before. It's this induced volatility. I think it's just a psychological game, you know, this kind of vertical nature. Um, and when they're acquiring Monero on top of the organic purchasing, that's when we sort of leave the underlying uh, trend line down here, go vertical for a little bit. We get this induced volatility, and that's just the that's just the game. If you're going to trade Monero, um, you just have to be aware that that's happening, and you really can take advantage of that sometimes. I'm always afraid that at some point Monero is just going to jump to the upside, and I'm I'm afraid of missing out. Um, so. One thing I wanted to show you guys was the fractal. So I'm sure y'all, I'm sure everyone remembers this big fractal here, which came from this time frame. Uh, basically, this fractal is invalidated now. There's, there's no way to say that this is going to continue, that we're going to suddenly jump to the upside. I do think that there's possibility that Monero does diverge at some point, and I think some kind of fundamental event will have to drive that. It could be the release of the Gox coin. Um, something like that, right, where where a bunch of Gox payees get coin they haven't had for seven to eight years. Um, most of them, it seems, are on Kraken. They're going to get their payouts in Bitcoin on Kraken, which for the most part lists Monero. And it only takes a small amount of that Bitcoin converting into Monero to cause some pretty big price movements. So there is the real possibility that at some point Monero's ratio does break out significantly. Uh, so we have the overall Monero dominance. This is not a, not a happy chart. You know, we kind of came up here and then we're already falling back down. This is, of course, the leveraging up 
of all the crypto prices in general. So when we're comparing just against Bitcoin, Monero is relatively doing well, holding steady. Um, and while we have been doing well for the past year on Monero's dominance across the board, we are taking a pullback now as people are jumping into their shit coins and, or their altcoins. Um, not all altcoins are shit coins, despite what maybe some maximalists might have told you. But uh, uh, this is just, we're, we're just going to have to accept that this thing is not going to take off to the upside anytime soon. Um, but, you know, that's why, I mean, I hodl Monero. I don't really trade Monero. I play in the, uh, in the altcoins game to try and get some of those crazy mad gains. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit. Let's go to the macro. Some interesting things happened with specifically the dollar index. Now, I want to correct something that uh, it's not exactly a mistake, but it might be a mistake that I made. So this is the dollar index on the weekly time frame. And if we click the logarithmic button down here, this is how my chart was last week. And this is how I had this line drawn. So you can see that I was connecting this point, that point, and that point. So this is a very long time frame. And essentially, I was saying that we're very close uh, to support down here, but I didn't realize that I had this logarithmic scale clicked. When we're talking about something like the dollar index, it's not an asset like, like Monero or the stock market that has a price against US dollars. It's not subject to the sort of exponential process of the printing of money and M2 and all that. So for charts like the dollar index, which are relatively range bound, you really want to look at these guys in a regular scale, not a logarithmic. So I had made a little bit of a mistake last week. Um, I didn't realize I was in log scale. Um, I think I have like an automatic, one of these buttons up here. When I click it, it sends me to logarithmic. So I kind of need to reprogram one of those to avoid that problem. At any rate, this is the big, uh, big picture dollar index. This was obviously the bull market where they printed a whole bunch of M2, 25% in a single year during 2020. So that's why the dollar index just really broke down there and that drove the bull market in a lot of assets. So basically we topped out and we've been on our way down. Now the thing that was interesting was the past couple days of action. The dollar index was rising while the stock market was also rising. Do I have the stock market here? Huh. Oh, yeah, okay, here we go. Yeah, so you can see the stock market. This is the S&P right here. For the past week, like the S&P has just been going crazy, right? It's just really broke out of its, of its large structure here. Um, this is the weekly chart. So you can see that we now have two weekly closes above the main bear market resistance. So effectively, this is confirming that the S&P has broken out. Now, the thing that was interesting is that this right here, the stock market was going up while the dollar index was also going up. And that's not too common. That happened in 2021 near the top of the market in the fall, October, November, where the dollar index was going up and stocks and crypto were also going up. So in a lot of ways, this is kind of a good thing. I was a bit concerned that we were getting too close to this lower resistance down here. So this line, this is that big line that we were looking at on the weekly time frame, right? Where it's like a decades long trend line. So getting very close to that was making me a bit concerned for how far this sort of mini bull market could go, this miniature bull market. Um, so with a dollar index jumping like that, it does give more room uh, potentially to come to the top of this line and then find its way down and then ultimately find some support down there. And that would be one among many signs that we might be looking at to try and determine when it's time to get out of this big movement to the upside. Uh, because I do think that the markets are probably going to have to contend with maybe not the absolute lows, but something close to it. I think later this year, with interest rates staying high, that's going to weigh on the market eventually. And a minimum, we're going to have to test those lows or somewhere close to it. So for the meantime, it's kind of nice to see that the dollar index took a big jump. Um, that I'm assuming was driven by the fact that the Federal Reserve is raising rates. They're still raising rates, although they are getting pretty close to their long term targets. OK, so we've got the reverse repos 
And again, this is money parked overnight with the Federal Reserve, institutional money. It's basically dry powder that they could redeploy to other places. Um, one thing I realized this week, this, this could be, the, the fact that this went up so much, it could have been a place for institutions to ride out the rising interest rate environment. The thing is, you don't want to hold, say, a 30-year or 10-year bond that's yielding a low rate in a rising interest rate environment because the new bonds being issued are going to be significantly more valuable than the bond that you're holding. So I think this is a, a factor that drives the yield curve inversion. Essentially, people get out of their long-term bonds expecting that those rates are going to rise and they don't want to get trapped in a bond that's yielding low um, that has some long maturity length. So they go to the shorter term bonds, they sell their longer term bonds, which sort of forces the yield curve to invert. At any rate, with the reverse repos, uh, this is exactly what we've been expecting. We're still trending towards the downside. You can see that the, uh, the Bollinger Bands, the standard deviation bands, is already curling under. So the distance between the top and the bottom is expanding. Um, so usually when you have a compression of the volatility like this and some time frame of being range bound, when you start to trend and you start to see the expansion of these bands, that typically indicates that you're starting to trend. So we're at the very beginning of what looks like a new trend in the reverse repos. Um, we should expect that this should come down to this broadening structure and hopefully at some point breakdown. The breakdown of this structure would be a really nice signal that we are in fact going to go on a long sustained run. So one thing that kind of worried me with the action after the Federal Reserve on Wednesday was how quickly the markets pumped. Um, let's go ahead and go to crypto. Yeah, so the markets went, this is total. The markets went from down here and just pumped straight to the top. And I, I guess that was okay. Um, that, that definitely was to be expected. I was part of that, right? I was smashing the market buy button myself. Um, so we haven't really broken out of the top here. There was some other ways you could have drawn these lines where it did look a bit like we were breaking out, um, but then we came kind of back down. So for example, uh, we could draw the line right here and then say, okay, that was almost a breakout. And then it really looks like we were about to break out. It still kind of does look like we're about to break out. Um, we're basically kind of riding the top of that line there. So overall, everything still looks really good, uh, including Monero. Uh, I do expect that Monero is going to be going along with the gains with everything else, um, despite the short-term consternation people might feel from watching some of these um, some of these shit coins just pump massively. Um, but yeah, and a lot of times they go up, they come right back down. Um, so. You just got to know that that's part of the game and, and not let it bother you. All right, this is Bitcoin. You well, what, are, what are the big um, altcoin pumps we're seeing these days? Like, what's kind of like the hot alts these days? Um, Hex is probably pumped oh more than God. anything else. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't sure if I should say that on your show. That um, is, uh, but yeah, so Hex here is in purple. Um, oh this God. is the Z scores, so we can see how everything's performing relative to its normal volatility. So Monero here is in the burnt orange, and despite doing very well for a long period of time uh, during the bear market, um, Monero is now kind of down. It's not doing as well as some of the other coins. Yeah, you can see a, Litecoin a in blue. Coin. Okay. What's that? It's not. It's not a meme pump coin, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Dogecoin is in yellow. We can see that that guy pumped pretty big um, earlier this week. Uh, Hex is in purple. Litecoin is in blue. Those seem to be the top performers, although I don't have every coin on here. Uh, I believe AVAX. Um, AVAX is one that's also been doing really well. Uh, overall, I do like the Ethereum chart better than I like the Bitcoin chart, and I like it better than I like the total chart as well. Um, so I do think that Ethereum is going to perform better than Bitcoin overall. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin dominance, in fact. So... We'll go to the weekly time frame so we can get our bearings. This is another chart that you want to make sure. See, there I am in logarithmic. You want to make sure you're in regular scale. Okay, so this is kind of very long term Bitcoin dominance. And at this point, Bitcoin dominance is 
probably never going to get above 50% again. I, I don't think that it will. Um, it's been here for a year and a half and it's just trending in this area. So um, basically, like we talked about, you know, if they want to convince the market that it's game on, they'll tend to pump the Bitcoin dominance. But then as soon as people are convinced, they just they YOLO into all of their altcoins. So you can see that um, basically from Wednesday, <laughs> Bitcoin dominance just dumped down uh, because, again, the Fed's not in the way. The crypto ecosystem in general understands now that the macro is very important, that the Fed drives everything uh, and that we're correlated to stocks. So being confident that the game was back on, uh, people rushed into their shit coins and, and Bitcoin dominance took a hit. So interesting dynamics. I, I think it's fun. Um, definitely a good way to make some money. I, I do feel like I can kind of justify it because I have a big hodl in Monero. Um, you know, like it really is, it should be about digital freedom money. That should be the most important aspect of this. Um, but I just can't watch all these other crazy madness go on and then not participate a little bit in it when you can see that there's just like gains to be had. And then I can roll that into Monero. So um, yeah, overall, everything still looks pretty good. Oh, let's take a little, let's take a look at a little bit more of a long-term resistance. Okay, so this line right here is this line right there. We should probably expect that that would pose some resistance. That's a very big line. Um, we're also getting close to that August top right there. Um, so we kind of like just barely broken above before the crash for FTX. So everything still looks nice. I would expect to keep trending here. Um, perhaps we might do something like that and then break. But ultimately, I, I think we should expect this final boss resistance line on total to, to eventually break. Um, other than that, you know, everything's just kind of steady as she goes. Um, there's going to be volatility. Oh, let's see. So this is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ really just smashed through all of its resistance. This was kind of like a zone of resistance. If you remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about how you want to sort of draw two lines here um, because both of these lines are kind of valid. You could, you could really think of either of them as being valid. Um, so one thing that I looked at pretty recently was to take the NASDAQ, divide it by the S&P. So this is how well the NASDAQ is doing relative to the S&P. And we could like draw some trend lines here. Um, I, I guess I had it wrong the other day when I was talking about how the S&P might outperform the NASDAQ, how that could continue. Um, nope, I was 100% wrong. <laughs> the NASDAQ has just done really well here. So um, again, that's kind of another signal that it's game on. Um, you know, if, uh, if you want to be participating in the altcoin badness, it's, it's really not a bad time uh, to be trying to pick up some positions. Um, you can try and trade that stuff. It feels like things are starting to feel a bit crazy. Um, you again, you want to have a hodl stack, and if you must trade, you know, keep a hodl stack and then put some other portion specifically for trading, because sometimes these coins will just go on massive runs, and you just don't expect it. It might do a fifty percent, a hundred percent. You're like, oh, cool, I've got some gains, and then you sell, and then it does like another hundred percent. So um, keep your Keep your trading stack, keep it separate from your HODL stack. And uh, yeah, hopefully we should all be getting some good gains, uh, including Monero, going into the near future here. All right. Don't don't sell your hex just yet. <laughs> it actually <laughs> pumped crazy this morning. It went up like another, it went up like 33% yesterday, and then it went up another 30% overnight. So I'm not wow. recommending that necessarily. Uh, but it does do some pretty big gains sometimes. So, where do you think Hex is going? Like, there's the scan. When does the when does it all you know the house of cards come falling down with Hex? <laughs> well, um, the founder has quite a lot of money that he took in. Um, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, I think yes, that sir. it can go for quite a while. So, the thing is, so they airdropped Bitcoin holders and only Bitcoin holders. If you were holding, and like I think it was November 2019, you could free claim. Um, and he also took in a lot of Ethereum. So if you all remember, EOS had this thing where uh, the money they took in on Ethereum, was that's how they launched EOS originally, 
it looked like they recycled that money into EOS. And so they were using that Ethereum to buy more EOS to pump the price. Um, so it seemed like now, particularly in the case of Hex, it doesn't seem uh, like that happened. Like the chain analysis wouldn't suggest that, but there's ways of getting around that. I mean, come on. Um, in fact, it was him that turned me on to Monero. Um, I won't say who it is, but the guy that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, coin yeah. Was turned me on to Monero originally. So, Yeah, he used to talk about it quite a bit. Yeah. Um, we, could, we could say his name. I'd love to have him on a Monero talk. Oh, okay. I'd love to yeah, have Richard Hart. Richard um, a lot of people used to love him. He was a maximalist back in the day. Yeah. I personally have learned a lot from him. I think he had really good perspective in a lot of ways. He's a um, he's a very intelligent guy, super super sharp, and he just figured out how to you know, essentially create create a fucking scam coin using his intelligence. I mean, he he understands people. He understood the meme thing kind of before anybody like really understood it. You know, the whole pump of mentals thing. Yeah, he really kind of. Yeah, like, he made that word. Yeah, yeah, and you know, he, he figured out how to game society with it. It's pretty pretty wild. I mean, he's he had the best performing coin last bull market. I think maybe Shiba outperformed it for a period of time, um, but it does look to me like this thing has legs and it could it could keep going. There's like a huge community of people. He's taken in a lot of money for the new project that he's launching. Um, so hypothetically, that cash or that crypto could be used to continue supporting price. Um, maybe he's not. Who knows? It could just be like like look at Dogecoin. Right, it has this meme potential, and people just love it, and they just pile into it, and it has these crazy gains. So, you know, all I could do is speculate and say that maybe Richard is using that money to pump hex. But as far as I understand it, the chain analysis wouldn't suggest that. There's ways of getting around that, obviously, like Monero. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, it's worth a YOLO there. Um, you know, don't get too caught up into it. Take your profits. Be happy for your gains. Stuff like that. I'm obviously I don't want to promote that. Um, yeah, I'm not touching that. I just wouldn't want wouldn't want to perpetuate his the you know that project yeah. in any way. The problem is I don't see a big difference between that and all the other crap that I see out there. Like, right. it's it's all the same to me. Yeah, it's, well, most of it is. Yeah, ninety nine percent. But at right, rate, Monero is looking good. Keep your bags, you know. <laughs> Pray to the crypto gods. <laughs> How's uh? How, do you, do you keep an eye on Zano at all? They're they're going to be down at the conference. Uh, they're they're like extremely small cap. They're if they're Zano. Is that the right way to spell it? Z Z A N O. Zano. I've heard of Zano. Zano. Okay, yeah. The uh, Andre is going to be a speaker. He's you know the guy who wrote the first implementation of Crypto Note. Oh no, kidding. Yeah, yeah. It's Z A N. We've had we, we've had him on Monero Topia recently, but we had a great interview with him. Uh, you know, I remember that actually three years ago now. Yeah, but we and, recently had him on too. And then we recently yeah, had him with, on with uh, um, Mind Your Biz or but something. But he, he's a wealth of historical crypto note knowledge. I mean, uh, he claims to be in direct communication with Nicholas Van Saberhagen. Dun, dun, dun. Um, That's cool. And he said he might be even lurking at the conference <laughs> oh snap that would be crazy <laughs> yeah it doesn't even pop up no i've got xano typed in here to the symbol search but xano usd it's not popping up maybe usdt it's on coin uh market cap. oh here we go no that's zen z-a-n-o it's e yeah no yeah that's weird. So, like, it's been around for a while. Uh, Zano itself. Yeah. I don't know how long. No, it, I think it's a. It was a fork of um, something else. I changed its name. Oh. Oh, what happened? We lost. We it. lost you. Oh. Nope. Sorry. But it, it's interesting what they're doing technically. He's trying to move to proof of stake. We'll probably ha uh, that'll probably be something we have him talking about. Maybe we'll do a panel on proof of work versus proof of stake. Yeah, I remember uh, he was on the spaces pretty yeah. recently. Yeah, Sunil, you found it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, share it here. I don't know if Body can uh, analyze from what you're bringing up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a, such a small cap thing. Is there anything here? Just can you see? Yeah. 
Am I spelling that right? It's Z. Zano. Yeah. You see? Z A N O. Yeah, I just brought it up. Let's go to the. Oh, the um, yeah, click good. on the all for the chart there. Here? Okay. So if you scroll some down. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All the way down. No, no, no. Okay. Oh. He wants to see the chart. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks like, like a crypto all? chart, all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typical pump and dump now. They're looking, I mean, it's it's good if we could be in log scale. I don't know if they, yeah, click the log button at the top right. But they, they obviously have an interest. You know, we invited them there because of, of the tech. I mean, they're, they're doing interesting things. It's not like they're just um, some copycat project. You know, they're inventing, inventing new tech. And that is cool to see a is privacy a project going proof of stake. I yeah. personally don't have anything necessarily against proof of stake. I have a few objections, but I remember he addressed those. He said they started at proof of work and then they transitioned to proof of stake. Yeah. Um, yeah although well, it causes a lot of consternation in the in the community. People, for whatever, they hear proof of stake and they're like, ah, no, impossible. Yeah. 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 We'll definitely have that debate at Monerotopia. The chart right. looks good. It looks like they're on their way up. It looks like they very easily could have bottomed. So interesting, and it's very low cap, right? So a move. I don't even know what where you buy, like what platforms it's on. I don't think it's listed in many places. Yeah, I couldn't even find it on uh, on Trading View there. Low cap coins have the highest potential to make huge gains. Right, that's the thing. That's all what you know. That's the might thing. be worth a yolo if you're if you're into uh, trying to find the next big pump. <laughs> Um, all right, man. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank we'll you. see. Hang around if you can. Uh, we're going to, you know, if you could jump in the spaces. If cool. Not, I, um, I may or may not be able to hang out today. All right, buddy. I may or may not. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Thank you for joining right, us now. We'll be in touch. All right, guys. All right, all right, oh, wait, buddy. What thing? What thing? Oh. Are you, are you going to be at a narco Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I'm into Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going tomorrow, actually. Oh, shit. Ooh. Okay. Fun time. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we have our friend over there, Neil. I had told you about. Yeah, Neil's gonna be running a, station. running a table over there. So, stop yeah, by. I'll over. um, I'll grab his contact information from you guys, and I wanted to help out whatever the Monerotopia stuff was going on. Awesome. Yeah, we're uh, gonna be printing out little flyers or whatever. Yeah, little to cards. Get the word out on Monerotopia. To get the word out. We put like a special offer, of, I think twenty percent off if they use the. Review. Yeah, yeah, through Dream Calm. Cool. Um, yeah, I still have my swag from the last one. Okay, nice. Oh. Yeah, walk around. Oh, the glasses and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, you know, follow the, the delicious smelling coffee and you'll find him. <laughs> You're going to have a good time. Yeah, I think, yeah, he gets there oh, tomorrow yeah. morning. So I think all's all right. Today's I Saturday, wish, yeah. I wish, yeah. You can hop along there. <laughs> all right, man. All righty. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, have a safe flight. Safe flight. Cheers. Will do. Adios. Awesome.